Hi again. Uh, here we are to continue talking about React and Redux, and uh, let's just do a little bit of work here. So we've got our um, we've got our, our counters here, and we've got this thing. You know what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, add some more actions and and work with our our reducers a little bit more to get a little practice with that. Right? We've made components. We practice connecting the components a couple times. Maybe we'll add a couple more components, like a min and an average component too. Um, and then in the future, what I'd like to do is is connect this asynchronously with a thunk, right? And that's like a, a little maneuver we can do with the reducers to do an asynchronous action. So so that'll be coming up too. So the first thing maybe is just to change gears a little bit. Why don't we arrange this in three columns? And what I'd like to do is put another column in here where that we can use to input something to create a new counter, right? Um, and then our, our total average and max and stuff can be in another column, right? So uh, so let's forget the uh, the JavaScript for a minute here. And uh, what is this guy? Oh, I guess this is defined but never used. Why don't we just delete that variable? We don't even need that guy, right? So let's go into our uh, style sheet here. And we're using the create React app. So I've got app.js and app.css in the same folder. And uh, if we look at this, I've got... Um, div app right here oh but it only has counter in it right you know what i should do is i should move these two guys into this div and then what we'll do is we will um we will um use flexbox to arrange all three of these actually you know what we probably got to put these two into one div and then I've got one child here and another child here and then we can use flexbox to arrange them okay so these two will go in their own column right okay so let's go back to our style sheet here and and I can see that I've got class name app on this div so we'll make that the flex parent right so let's go to app CSS I've got app right here it says text align center let's do um, display flex uh, justify content center and um, what else um, I think that's actually might be good wait let's do uh, uh, flex direction row Oh, there we go. So we got one column here and one column there. I want these columns to be even width, though. Maybe I got to give each one of those guys. Um, maybe I should do. Actually, let's do. Let's do a grid, and then do um, what is it? Uh, grid template columns, and we'll do um, repeat. Uh, three and one fr so i'll make three columns there we go right and then i can put another item in this column so that's looking a lot better there and uh, let's kind of mock up our add a new counter thing and we'll put it on this side we'll have the uh the stats on the other one right okay great so uh let's go in here and let's add a new component and um we'll add a new file and we'll call this um, how about uh, create counter component create counter JS and uh, you know this will have all the boilerplate stuff in it it'll have react and component and we'll import these from react and then we're gonna connect this we might not get to this in this video, but let's do uh, let's import connect uh, from React uh, Redux, and then let's make a class right. So here, this will be um, create um, counter extends component. And uh, let's for now we'll export default and uh, 
we'll just export create counter, but later we'll have to add in map state to props and map dispatch to props if we need those, right? So, uh, and if we don't need those, we, we can just get rid of this connect, right? So now we gotta render something. So let's add something to render here. So, uh, so there we go. So what are we gonna return? We need a div, right? And um, what else are we going to put in here? So we need like, a, let's imagine every counter should also have a name, right? And this will make our whole system more complicated. So we'll have to refigure our whole reducer system and what goes on state for counters, right? So every counter will have a count and it will also have a name, okay? So we'll give each one a label. So um, you'll have to import or input the label Right, so let's uh, let's make a paragraph here, and in this paragraph, we'll add an input, right, and then underneath it, we'll add another paragraph. Actually, underneath this paragraph, we'll add a paragraph. And inside this paragraph here, we'll add a button. How about that, right? So we'll put a button in here, and this button will say, you know, um, create, right? And uh, that's probably pretty good for now. Maybe this this input, just to make it a little easier to understand, we'll set the type to uh, text, and we'll set the placeholder to um, name. And we'll set this up as a controlled component, which is the pattern that we use with inputs in, in, in form elements in React. But we'll, we'll add that later. So let's just test this and see what it looks like in our, in our app. So I'm going to go to app.js. I'll import um, create counter from and I'll have to go up a folder to find create counter and nothing's broke yet that's really good and then uh, maybe I'll put it to the to the left of counter so I'll put it up here before counter create um, counter okay oh great so there's our name there so we can enter a name we can say cookies Right? And we'll click here and it'll add a counter over here. So maybe we'll start with no counters and then we'll, you know, if you click in there, we'll add a counter, right? And then counters, maybe you'll have a, a delete button or something. We're, I'm just thinking of different things we can do to just keep practicing with React and Redux. These videos are pretty short, so you can go through these really fast. So anyway, so we're set up pretty good. And the next video we'll go through, um, we'll go through like using or, or modifying our, our our um, reducer to handle like a more complex state, okay? Because essentially right now state is an array of numbers. We started with just state as a single number, right? One value, and then we kind of upped it to an array of values. And now we're gonna have to be an array of objects that both have a name and a, a value, right? And we could put other features on there too. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll continue in the next video.